At the beginning of this part, we see a guy who is going somewhere with a flying sword, and he is saying, damn it, what kind of bullshit opportunity. It's obviously a legend that catches wind and shadows. You have to let me check and the guy comes down, and he says, the Divine Sword sect. They have suppressed me as an outer disciple for so many years. I really don't want to serve you anymore. And this boy's name is Lu Rang. And he takes out a lot of fruits from his pocket and says, With my skills in growing spiritual plants, why am I still worried about finding a home? And when he looks up, there are flying ships flying in the air. And looking at her the boy is thinking, The Roaring True Dragon, is a member of the Holy Dragon Royal Family? Unexpectedly, such forces also fled to the southern region. What are they doing here? The outlet is full of dangers, and you haven't escorted me in yet, and then something falls down from that flying ship, and we see that a boy has been thrown from that flying ship. And that boy is angrily saying to them, Do you also know the dangers here? The queen asked us to send you off, but she didn't ask us to die. And Lu Rang is thinking while looking at that boy this, is this the abandoned son of the holy dragon royal family with a broken dragon soul? And the boy notices Lu Rang and says, I'm here at Long Zixuan of the holy dragon dynasty. Brother Dao is walking with his sword behind his back. Do you dare to say that Brother Dao is from the Duga family? And looking at this boy it seems that he has not slept for many nights. But that boy is thinking, the power of the Duga family is well known to the entire Xientian world. It will be much safer if you can travel with the sword cultivators of the Duga family. And Lu Rang says to Zixuan smilingly, I am not from the Duga family. I am an outer disciple of the divine sword sect in the lower north region. My name is Lu Rang. And Zixuan says to Lu Rang, Brother Lu, we can't control the air ahead. How about we go together? This Tsumli mountain range is full of crises and one more person will bring more strength. Then now, both of them are moving forward facing many difficulties. And at the same time both of them are also talking to each other. Brother Lu Rang, are you also here for the legendary master who is recruiting disciples here? And Lu Rang says yes, but where are the damn experts in this place? Only the unpopular ones are sent as cannon fodder, and now both of them get very tired while walking. And Zixuan is saying to Lu Rang, you have also seen that although I am a direct prince, I was born with an incomplete dragon soul and it is difficult to practice. I am called a waste in the dynasty. I don't know how many people want me to die. But as soon as both of them look ahead, they see a village and seeing that village, Zixuan says, what kind of holy place is this? And Lu Rang says, this place must be extraordinary. Able to be in a big preserved in the tribulation, there must be something extraordinary in it. And Zixuan is moving fast, and Lu Rang is saying to Zixuan from behind, We don't know the depth of this mountain village at all. How can we enter it rashly? Many forbidden areas in the Tsunli Mountains have been destroyed, but this place is intact. This is the forbidden area among forbidden areas. And Zixuan is saying to Lu Rang, Brother Lu, Although I am the prince of the dynasty, I have long been no different from a useless person. Instead of living in the world and suffering all the cold looks, ridicule, and oppression, I would rather risk my life. What you said makes sense, but there's something wrong inside even if I am a Jedi, I am not afraid to bury my bones in it. And Lu Rang gets surprised after listening to Zixuan and says, Risk your life that's right. Just die. Brother Long, wait for me. Then as both of them move ahead, Zixuan's eyes fall on a pit. And he stops there and starts looking at that pit. And Lu Rang Zixuan says this, It's just a ditch. Why don't you keep walking? And when Lu Rang sees the water of that pit, he gets surprised after seeing that water and Zixuan says to Lu Rang, Brother Lu, smell it. Then both of them start smelling that water. And they like its smell very much. Then both of them directly put their entire heads in the water of that pit and start drinking that water. And Lu Rang is saying, if this water is used to nourish elixir, that will definitely work. And just then, the village elder arrives at that place. And he says to those two boys, What are you doing? How do you drink water from the sewer? Are you from outside? You must be tired from walking? But you can't drink this water. It's not good for your health. There are people growing vegetables upstream and they often apply farmyard manure. 
and Zishuan gets surprised after listening to the words of that village elder, and he does not know what to say. Then the elder, while leaving, says to both of them, Young man, you are really careless. Come on, come home with me. And Zishuan tells Lu Rang, When there is a car ahead of me, I dare not obey. Brother Lu, this senior is unimaginable. The crutch in his hand seems to be of a higher grade than the quasi-immortal weapons in my holy land. This senior may be the legendary master who accepted disciples. Then the elder takes out water with a spoon and says to them, The water over there is not clean. Come on, let's drink a gourd each to quench our thirst. Then we can pick some fruits to eat along the way, and then we're on our way. And when both of them see that spoon, they become very surprised. And both of them are thinking after looking at that spoon, what kind of water drift is this? This is clearly a keel. A treasure that is beyond a quasi-immortal weapon is only used for drinking water? The best elixir. Supergrade, supergrade elixir. Or is it still above the super level? And the village elder, seeing both of them silent, asks, What's going on? Why are you all stunned? And then, both of them fall on their knees in front of the village elders, and say to them, Senior, please accept me as your disciple. And the elder laughingly says to both of them, I said why did you come into our small mountain village? It turns out that come and pay homage to the handsome man. You've come to the right place. However, you have chosen the wrong person to become your disciple. It is not me who wants to be a disciple. And both of them are surprised to hear the elder's words. Then the elder tells both of them, How can I recruit a disciple? The person who wants to recruit a disciple is Shaoli. Shaoli is omnipotent and proficient in all kinds of martial arts. He has been helping me with my old bones all these years. My crutches, water and many other utensils were all made by Shaoli. The jujube tree in the yard was also made by Shaoli. You guys, if you can learn even a little bit from Shaoli, it will be enough for you to use for the rest of your life. Get up quickly and go find Shaoli. Then both of them say thank you to the elder and leave, to find Li Fan. And both of them are running very fast, and are also thinking, such a peerless expert actually praised another person like this. How terrifying is that person? It's unimaginable. This is truly a great opportunity. The senior just now was at least an immortal in cultivation. This is the guide of the immortal, pointing out the future for the two of us. And now, both of them reach near Li Fan's house. And Lu Rang looks ahead and says, The senior Li said that the immortal is right in front. Come on, let's hurry up. Now, before people from the outside come, hurry up and become a disciple. And Zixuan says the words on the courtyard door. And Lu Rang looks at those words and says, These three words give me an indescribable feeling that makes me want to keep watching. And Zixuan is also shocked, and he says, I can't detect the mystery but these three words are more terrifying than the words left by an immortal ancestor of my dynasty. And then Nanfeng sees both of them. And now both of them tell Nanfeng about themselves and say, I am Lu Rang from the Divine Sword Sect. This is Long Zixuan from the Holy Dragon Dynasty. We are here to become apprentices to Senior Li. And Nanfeng happily says to both of them, I didn't expect someone to come so soon. Please wait a moment. I'm going to the teacher to tell about you both. And Nafong goes to tell Li Fan. But Lu Rang asks Zixuan, Is this girl the disciple of that senior? And Zixuan tells Lu Rang, This senior is a real master, this girl is a few years younger than us, but the scriptures have guidance from the gate of strength, and Lu Rang gets surprised after listening to Zixuan and says, What? This girl is actually a venerable? In my impression, all sages are immortal. And Zixuan says, we have to be respectful. And Nafeng comes back and tells them, the teacher allows you to come in. And when both of them go inside Li Fan's house, they are very surprised to see the surrounding environment. And Zixuan is looking at that place and saying, my dragon soul is trembling and reviving. There seems to be something extraordinary here that attracts my dragon soul. And Lu Rang is very surprised to see the spiritual energy of this place and he says, what treasure tree is this? Compared with this peach tree, the super-grade elixirs in the sect can be fed to pigs. Even the jujube tree in the immortal courtyard is far from comparable to the peach tree here. How terrifying is the master here? 
And Li Fan comes to both of them and says, Why are you two in a day? And at the same time Li Fan is thinking looking at both of them. It seems that the disaster in the outside world is really serious. Otherwise, who would be willing to learn such useless things from myself? Then both of them bow down on their knees directly near Li Fan. And says to Li Fan, Senior, please accept the two of me as your disciples. And Li Fan says to both of them, Don't be like this, get up quickly. Why do you two want to worship me as your teacher? And Li Fan is thinking looking at both of them, he can't be too casual about accepting disciples. Ning Kailan, please understand carefully. And Li Fan says to both of them, Follow the rules when guests leave. And as soon as Li Fan says this, yellow light energy starts flowing at that place. And seeing that energy both of them start thinking, This force forced me to get up. Is this the legendary saying that follows the rules? And Zixuan tightens his hand and says to Li Fan, Senior and Junior, Although they were born into a fairly powerful family, they were not welcomed by the clan. This time, they were forced to come to the Tsangli Mountains. The junior thought that he was destined to die, but he never expected that, wandered into the secluded place of the seniors. The junior just wants to be with the senior, listen to the advice and regret, and ask the senior to accept the junior. The junior will definitely work hard and make progress. And listening to Zishuan's words, Li Fan is thinking, another poor child. Now that the Tsangli mountain range has been destroyed long ago, he is still forced to come here by his family. It is also pitiful. And at the same time Lu Rang is saying to Li Fan, Senior, I want to follow you and learn the art of farming. All my life, I have loved planting things. If one day I could plant a peach tree like this, I would be willing to die. And Li Fan smilingly tells Lu Rang, A drink and a peck are all fate. Since you two are here, stay. And now, Li Fan has chosen both of them as his disciples. And after knowing that Li Fan has made both of them his disciples, both of them become very happy. And tears start coming out of both of their eyes. And Zixuan is crying and saying, We really succeeded in becoming a disciple. God, have you finally opened your eyes? And while filling tea in the cup, Li Fan says to both of them, Okay, come and sit. I've been tired since I've been here in a hurry. I want to drink a cup of tea to quench my thirst. And as soon as Zixuan drinks that tea, he feels something and thinks, The broken dragon soul in my body is being replenished. It's a pond. The pond in the courtyard is where I want to go. And Li Fan says to both of them, I just heard from you too, Lu Rang, you want to learn the art of farming, right? And Lu Rang speaks enthusiastically, Yes, I don't respect my seniors as my master. I want to learn the art of cultivation. This is also my lifelong pursuit. And after listening to Lu Rang, Li Fan says, Well, in that case, I will teach you the art of cultivation. And at the same time Li Fan is thinking his lifelong pursuit is to be a farmer. I have to say that this ambition is just a matter of luck. If he wanted to learn something advanced, he would not be able to teach him. And Zixuan says to Li Fan, Master, I want to go to the pond. And Li Fan listens to Zixuan and says, It seems that you want to learn the art of fish farming. Well, I will also teach you this. And Li Fan is thinking, It's not bad for one to help him farm and the other to help him raise fish. And now Li Fan stands up and says, Okay, you two come with me, and I will teach you the techniques of planting and raising fish in turn. Nafong, bring me the teacher's hoe. And when both of them see Li Fan's hoe, they both get very surprised and they are thinking, a treasure far beyond a quasi-immortal weapon. Just by looking at it, you can feel the condensation of the avenue, and there is a strong oppressive force. Then Li Fan tells them, let's go to the vegetable field and teach Lu Rang how to farm first. And as soon as both of them see Li Fan's vegetables, they become even more surprised. And both are thinking, Master, do you care about this? Call it a vegetable field? Oh my God, what on earth is this place? Who exactly is master? Then Li Fan says to Lu Rang, Lu Rang, if you want to learn the art of planting and breeding, the first step is to learn to loosen the soil. Don't think that loosening the soil is easy. Just keep an eye on it. And Li Fan starts working with a hoe, seeing which both of them become even more surprised. And Li Fan says to Lu Rang, although loosening the soil is the most basic first step, 
Only when you master the land can you grasp what level of crops you can grow. It seems simple, but there is also truth in it. And Li Fan starts giving the Ho to Lu Rang, and Lu Rang bows before the Ho and says, Master's Ho has opened up a supreme avenue for his disciples. If the disciple understands, he will definitely study hard and strive to embark on the road of farming as soon as possible. And Li Fan says to Lu Rang, Come on, this hoe will be handed over to you from now on. And Lu Rang grabs the hoe, but that hoe is very heavy. And now, Li Fan takes Zishuan with him, and while leaving he says to Zishuan, Come on, I'll take you to the pond. And now Li Fan is feeding the fishes, and is saying to Zishuan, In this pond, I have raised some koi carps for my teacher. Fish farming is also a delicate job, which can cultivate your moral character. If you learn to observe koi carp, you will also get a different kind of fun. Fish culture. The most important thing is to learn to feed. And Zishuan starts imagining and thinks about Li Fan. No wonder when I entered the small courtyard, I felt the broken dragon soul in my body began to come alive. I understood everything. What is fed in this pond is the real dragon of the pond. And now, a lot of energy starts coming out from inside Zishuan, and Zishuan is thinking, the reason why the Holy Dragon Dynasty became a holy land-level force is because an ancestor once heard the shadow of a giant dragon from a distance, and learned from it. But now I can face it, but it is a pool of real dragons. And also Nafong is a little nervous and says, what the teacher feeds in this pond are indeed divine creatures. And Xiling also says nervously, if the teacher hadn't been here in person, a few of us would have been killed alive. And Zishuan again bows before Li Fan and Li Fan says to Zishuan, No need to be polite. Just get up and you will be responsible for these baits from now on. And Li Fan sees Zishuan doing this and thinks, Lao, it seems that he really had a miserable life in the outside world. He worked really hard to get a chance to live in the small courtyard. And now both are doing their respective work and Zishuan is thinking I am too weak to fully observe the swimming trajectory of this real dragon. And Lu Rang is also thinking that too while working, this kind of treasure requires tremendous strength to lift. He exhausted all his spiritual power just by barely lifting it, let alone controlling it. And Li Fan is thinking about both of them. Can you fall asleep even if you feed a fish? This person who can't even lift his head several times is probably because he has lived a miserable life in the outside world and cannot keep up with his nutrition for a long time, which has caused his body to become weak. He needs to take good care of himself. After this, the scene shifts, and we see those people dressed in black and one of the men speaking, I still haven't sensed Zhang Xian's aura. He was killed too thoroughly. And the other black hoodie man says, this person must be hiding in the southern territory. And the first man says smilingly, I have a plan in my mind, let's go and find a force to go with. After this, the scene shifts and we see, Luofu Holy Land. And at this place someone is speaking, Taoist friends want to take a step closer to entering Taoism with swords. Brother Yu secretly thinks that just by cultivating sword energy, he can take a step closer. But hearing his words the other man gets angry and says, How dare a little ant speak nonsense about Taoism? Then we see two people, and this is the man, Holy Lord of Luofu. And the name of the other man is Chao Yijian. And just then, that black hoodie man comes near Luofu. And black hoodie's partner attacks Chao Yijian, and injures him. And the man says, And I ask what is the most powerful force in the southern region. And seeing the power of that man, Chao Yijian is thinking, no resistance, such terrifying strength? Is the other party a true immortal? And Chao Yijian says to that man, Senior, we are also new to the southern territory and are not familiar with it. Perhaps we only know about it at Taiyan Holy Land and Ziang Holy Land. And they say to Luofu and Chao Yijian, It's not enough to alert the snake yet, so let's use these two building ants as chess pieces. It seems that Taiyan Holy Land and Ziang Holy Land are definitely connected to the power that killed Zhang Xian. And the other man in that black hoodie says, Do you two want to become the masters of the southern territory and dominate everything? Just do something for me and I will give you everything. This opportunity is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, and both of them get surprised after listening to his words. And now both of them get ready to work for them. After this, the scene shifts 
and we see the Taiyan Holy Land. And both Luofu and Chaoijian have come to this place. And Luofu is saying, Fellow Taoists, all the sects have arrived, this time it's up to you and me. And Chaoijian says, Brother Tao, don't worry, with the current strength of you and me, carving up the southern territory is no problem. And also at that place, now both master and the woman have arrived. And the second master looks at them and says, What do the two holy masters intend to do by summoning all the sects in the Xientian realm for such a huge battle? And Chaoijian says laughingly, It's easy to say. I'll make a special trip to visit the owners of Taiyan and Xiang Holy Lands and discuss it. Discuss the redivision of resources in the southern territory. And after hearing Chao Yijian's words, the first master gets angry. And so does the second master. And both of them are releasing their energy. And the first master says to them, What an ungrateful thing. We kindly ask them to come to the southern territory to take refuge. But now they come back to bite us. And the second master also says, How unreasonable. I really thought our holy land in the southern territory was easy to bully. And Luofu looks at both of them and says, Everyone has a share in the southern territory, and those who are capable will live there. If you can't do it, you should get out. Then the second master says, Quasi immortal? No wonder holy lord Luofu dared to stand up. It's just that if you want to rely on the power of a quasi immortal to carve up our southern region, I'm afraid and both of them get angry, after hearing what the second master said. And both of them start releasing their power. And Loafu says to them, If the quasi-immortal is not enough, what about the other two? And Chao Yijian releases a lot of his energy and says, How? Are you mute? I'm giving you face. I hope you can save some face. And if you insist on forcing me to take action, I'm afraid you will be in trouble for the death of your sect. And the second master says to the woman, Saint Qian Ning, Goddess Linger, we are forced to face the enemy. And after listening to the second master, the woman says, There is no need to endure it any more. These people have trampled our good intentions underfoot, and now both masters release their full power, and say to them, Do you really think that the southern region is a place where you can do whatever you want? And Loafu gets surprised and thinks, What? Are they both quasi-immortals? Could it be that there are real immortals behind them? But he says, however, even if you are quasi-immortals, you will still lose today. Our combined background far exceeds yours. And just then, Linger comes to that place and says, you've gone too far. The southern territory has opened the door of convenience for you to avoid disaster, but you repay kindness with hatred. Really looking for death. And Linger starts taking out a weapon from herself. And then, that black hoodie man comes to that place and says to both of them, Retreat. And Loafu is surprised to hear this and says, The arrow is on the string, master. Why retreat? And the man tells both of them, Fool. The other party has a fairy treasure on his body, and you two losers are no match at all. And both of them are surprised to hear this. After this, Loafu asks both of them master to stop. And he comes forward and says, Two holy masters, we have already achieved enlightenment and become quasi immortals. Once a war begins, the entire southern territory will probably suffer. And the second master says, What do you want to say? So Lofu tells them, It's very simple. How about letting the younger generation compete and decide the allocation of resources in the southern region based on their victory or defeat? And second master asks Linger, Goddess Linger, what do you think? And Linger says, The Holy Lord's decision is that no matter what you do, we will support you. Then the second master says to both of them, Good. In this case, our two holy lands represent that the southern territory has agreed to your challenge. Three days later, the young generation of the southern region will face the geniuses of the four major regions. The next day, the first master and second master are speaking. I hope the young generation in the southern region will not disappoint us. The Luofu Holy Land and the Divine Sword Sect came to Qin Meng fiercely and they were clearly ready to start a war. However, when the two goddesses got angry, their attitudes changed instantly, which seemed too strange. And the second master says, Yes, I think they saw something from the two goddesses and felt shocked. And the first master says to Linger, Saint Qian Ning, I suspect that there are others behind them. And the second master says, Right. And in just one month, 
Holy Lord Luofu and Chao Yijian. They have all reached the quasi-immortal realm. How could they advance so quickly? I'm afraid someone is supporting them behind the scenes. And Linger says to the woman, Qian Ning, maybe we should report this matter to Senior Li. And the woman says, I'll tell Senior Li right now. After this, the scene shifts towards Li Fan. And Li Fan is sitting in the chair and thinking, drinking tea and listening to music is a life like this. But there are still eight out of ten apprentices. How long will it take to complete it? And Na Feng is doing her practice. And then, she reaches some other place and says, where am I? Where is the road? And when Zixuan sees Na Feng, he gets surprised and says, senior sister, have you touched the immortal way? And Xiling is also surprised and she says, Sister Na Feng is going to break through? And Li Fan is thinking, Nanfeng's piano skills have improved a lot, but it's a bit messy. Let me sort it out for her. And then, Na Feng hears a voice and thinks, This voice is the teacher, and the teacher is guiding me. And then, she opens her eyes. I saw that door. I have become a quasi-immortal. Then Na Feng comes to Li Fan and says to him, Thank you teacher for your guidance. The disciple almost went astray. And Li Fan says to Na Feng, you play well. If you go far on this road, you will encounter all kinds of inner demons. It is normal. And Zixuan gets very surprised to see Na Feng and he says, Senior sister is only about twenty years old, but she has already become a quasi-immortal? And Xiling says, it's all because of the teacher. As long as the teacher is here, the immortal way that the entire Xientian world looks up to is nothing. And then the woman calls Li Fan from a distance, is Senior Li here? And Li Fan understands that the woman is coming. And he asks the woman to come inside. Then Li Fan asks both of them, what's the matter with you? And the woman says, Senior, before. I advise Seniors Yuan Yang and Ling Chao to accept people from all regions and take refuge in the Southern Territory. But now, they bite back and want to rob the Southern Territory of resources. And Linger also says, Senior. In order to determine the ownership of the resources in the southern territory, those people propose to hold a competition among young people. Li Fan gets surprised after listening to both of them and says, You are not wrong. What is wrong is just greed in human nature. Don't blame yourself for being kind. It is the most cherished light in life. And Li Fan is thinking, Is it a martial arts contest? To put it bluntly, it should be that both parties are going to have a fight and I am not good at fighting in groups. And then Lu Rang and Zixuan come to Li Fan, and both of them say, they've gone too far. How can these people be so ungrateful? Repaying evil with kindness is shameful, and Li Fan is thinking looking at both of them, gang war? Don't you happen to have two apprentices? And Li Fan says to both of them, do you two have any experience in fighting? And after listening to Li Fan, the woman and Linger are thinking, seniorly. Are you going to send out your own disciples? If Senior Li's disciples take action, then what is there to worry about? And Lu Rang and Zixuan say to Li Fan, Master, we will definitely win this battle. Disciples are willing to go. Listening to both of them, Li Fan says, Good. In this case, you go with Qian Ning and the others. Since there is no weapon in the competition, then look, are there any weapons in your hands in this yard? And when both of them listen to Li Fan, they both look at each other and think, yes, we'll go find him right now. There are countless treasures in this small courtyard, but there are very few of them that we can control with our current cultivation level. Master asked us to choose the weapons that we can control according to our ability. Got it, I remembered. Then both of them go inside to get the weapon. And after some time, both of them have selected their weapons and Zixuan says, look at this. I got something for you too. But when Li Fan sees Zixuan's weapon, he is unable to say anything. Because Zixuan has chosen a fire stick as his weapon, and Lu Rang has chosen a chopstick as his weapon. And Lu Rang says happily, Good. I can use this treasure enough. Then both of them say to Li Fan, Master. Both of us have already picked out weapons. And Li Fan is thinking after listening to both of them, Aren't these two fools? Let you choose. Of these two guys, one chooses a fire stick or the other chooses chopsticks. Is this to give someone away? Then Li Fan says to both of them, That's all, I won't say anything else as a teacher. When you fight, 
Just stay far away and don't hurt yourself. And the woman happily says to Li Fan, Thank you, senior. In this case, we will go back and inform senior Yuan Yang. If they know that senior has sent a disciple, they will definitely be overjoyed. And Na Feng is worried about Si Xuan and Lu Rang. So Na Feng comes to Li Fan and says to Li Fan, If the two junior brothers can't win, let's go next time. And Li Fan thinks after listening to Na Feng, a girl who plays the piano suddenly said that she wanted to take her painting sister out to fight in a group. Too special a girl is disobeying. After this, the scene shifts and we see a man standing in the middle of a waterfall feeling very happy and saying, I have reached the supreme level. And just then, Loafu comes to that place, and there is another boy with him, and that boy says, Senior brother, I have also reached the eighth level of Mahayana. And Loafu says to that man, You too have received the master's gift. This time, you must take over the entire southern territory from my Loafu holy land. And the man greets Loafu and says, Holy Lord, don't worry. Looking at the younger generation of Xientian realm, no one can reach the supreme realm at my age. I am bound to win this competition. And that black hoodie man is also listening to all these things. And he is saying, after burning all the potential in life, in exchange for three days of reaching the pinnacle, he couldn't even enter the immortal path. What a waste. I just hope that you two losers can let me see some clues about the person behind this competition. I apologize. And now the day of battle has come. And people from many sects have also come to see this battle. And both Zixuan and Lu Rang have also come to that place to fight. And the first master is saying, This time, all the holy land sects from the Xientian realm have arrived, so they have to rely on the two young masters. And Lu Rang tells them, Don't worry, senior. The two of us will definitely live up to master's instructions. And Luofu and his two fighters have also reached that place. And Luofu is saying, I hope you two losers from both sects can live a little longer. And after saying this, Luofu starts laughing loudly. And seeing him laughing like this, the second master says to him, It's not certain who will win. But Luofu does not care about what the second master says, and he says laughingly, No matter who wins, it can't be your southern region. And now the fight is about to start, and a monk comes to fight. And the monk says the young monk Qingqin is willing to ask for advice from the people all over the world on behalf of Xiamo. And seeing that monk the people around start talking. Nine sons of the holy Buddha of the western desert the leader? It is said that this person has the appearance of an immortal. And the boy says to the monk, Luofu holy land, Tua Gao, please enlighten me. And as soon as the fight starts, the man disappears from his place. And the monk is shocked to see this and that man appears directly near that monk, and gives him a dangerous hit, and says to that monk, Hey hey! Is it the appearance of immortality in the world? This is the legend. And that man throws that monk away, and he wins the fight, and everyone becomes very surprised to see the power of that man. That monk has been badly injured, and his cultivation has also been destroyed. And the man goes to the monk and says to him, Old monk, it is a kindness of mine to spare him his life. Then the boy starts shouting and challenging everyone and says, Who else is dissatisfied? Who else? And Luofu is very happy and he says, Yuan Nang and Ling Chao, you two are useless men. They are no match for our proud son. Kneel down and admit defeat. I can still keep you alive in the southern territory. And again Luofu starts laughing loudly. And those two elders are talking to each other. It seemed that there was someone really powerful behind the Luofu holy land. I started to doubt the other party's purpose. I'm afraid it's not that simple. Fortunately, all this was obviously within Senior Li's expectation. That's why he sent his disciples. And then, Lu Rang comes to that battlefield, and says to our gal, I, Lu Rang, come to fight you. And a man looks at Lu Rang and says, Lu Rang? Isn't this kid an outer disciple of our sect? Have you been sent to the Tsunli Mountains by me? He should have died over there. And that Chao Yijian is laughing very loudly and saying, How ridiculous! Are there no people left in your two holy places? This is just an abandoned dog of our sect. Ridiculous! And the first master comes to Chao Yijian and says to him, Chao Yijian, I hope you don't regret your words at this moment. 
Then we see the battle, and the man disappears again. But Lu Rang is thinking about Li Fan, how can he fight? Then he opens his eyes, and is about to punch the man, and is surprised to see Lu Rang's reaction. And with just one punch from Lu Rang, that man's condition worsens, and blood starts coming out from his mouth, and seeing this, the condition of both Luo Fu and Chao Yijian worsens. And also there is that black hoodie man in that crowd. And he is watching all these things. And he is talking to his partner. How come this child has just evolved with a feeling of a great way? And his partner says, Behind this man should be the deposit we are looking for. And Lu Rang is saying to the people of the Divine Sword Sect. And Chao Yijian and Luo Fu are looking at each other and saying, I have given the treasure to the two of them to come together. Yes. Owner. And just then, a bright light shines in front of Lu Rang, and two people come to that place to fight with Lu Rang. And that man is saying, You trash. Court death. But this does not make any difference to Lu Rang, and he says, Idiot, is it just you? Dare you be so presumptuous? Do you want to die? And Lu Rang is thinking happily, I have two senior sisters, one is supreme and the other is quasi immortal. There is also a master who is invincible in heaven and on earth. Is it difficult to break through the master? And then both of them move forward to attack Lu Rang. And seeing this the first master gets scared and says, Immediately send our sex quasi-immortal weapon to young master Lu Rang. But Zixuan stops both the masters and says, The two holy masters don't have to worry. And both of those masters stop, and while watching the fight, they are thinking, Yes. Lu Rang is a disciple of Senior Li. Will there be a shortage of quasi-immortal weapons? And we see the fight scene, and Lu Rang would have stopped the attack of both of them with his chopsticks. And the power of that chopstick is so much that the sword of both of them breaks. And because of the power of that chopstick, the girl starts disintegrating. And when Luo Fu and Chao Yijian see this, they get a big shock, and Luo Fu is saying, Chopsticks? That's a chopstick. Is it an immortal weapon? Is there an immortal behind him? And when both of them see this whole thing, they too get a big shock, and the first man says, Just one, is already a treasure beyond the level of true immortal. And the other man looks at that treasure and says, We must master this magical weapon. Once you get it, the identity of the person behind it will be revealed. Then the man turns back and see two men. But then both of them bow before him and say to them, Master, spare our life. Just now, the elder brother who was holding a quasi-immortal sword was beheaded. But the other man says to both of them, Don't panic. Swallowing this medicine will bring you two to a higher level. In addition, I will give you a true immortal level weapon. You two don't have to be afraid. The magic weapon in Lu Rang's hand has already been animated. After absorbing the spiritual energy he heard, he is now no different than a useless person and after listening to that man's words, both of them become happy. Just then, both of them come behind Lu Rang and tell Lu Rang to put down his chopsticks and bow before us and surrender. And the power of both of them has increased a lot. And both of them also have a treasure in their hands. And when Lu Rang listens to what both of them are saying, he gets very angry. But then a dragon comes to that place, and he says that this battle is not over yet, and it happens to be Zixuan. And Zixuan says to both of them, I took over this battle for my junior brother. Just then, one of the men discovers the treasure, and with the help of its powers he attacks the ground. And a huge explosion is about to happen on that ground, but then, Zixuan uses his dragon roar, due to which a huge explosion occurs at that place. And due to that explosion, both of them get seriously injured. And seeing this, both the black hoodie men get surprised, and one of them says, True dragon magic? This is now Ryongwu technology? The true dragon clan has been extinct for a long time. Is there one lying dormant in the Shaoxian heavenly realm? And the other man says happily, Get him. It is extremely possible to obtain the treasures of the true dragon clan. This is the ultimate destiny. Yes. Definitely it is. Must get it. This is mine. You can actually get such treasures during your trip to Xientian realm. And both of them start flying in the air, and one of them attacks with the help of his power. But then Zixuan starts moving his fire stick, and due to that a black energy comes out from that fire stick, 
which goes directly and attacks both the men, due to which both of them disappear within a few moments. And at that place, blood starts raining from both of them. And when Lu Rang sees this, he is very surprised, and he is thinking, I beg your darling. Is this fire stick so, so scary? I originally thought that the chopsticks in my hand were already very scary. And seeing all this, Linger is saying, seniorly. Such a big move, he destroyed two more true immortals. And the woman says happily, I knew it. With Senior Lee here, all plots will be shattered. And now sweat starts flowing from Loafu's forehead. This clearly shows that Loafu is very nervous. And he bows down to his knees, and along with him Chao Yijian also sits disappointed. And Loafu is saying, what's going on? Why do even the invincible immortals die so casually? And Chao Yijian also says, what kind of terrifying existence is hidden in the southern territory? Is this a dream? And both the masters come to them and say, two of you. Give us an explanation. Say, who is behind you? And both Loafu and Chao Yijian are saying, this has nothing to do with me. I have no idea right. We don't know at all. And the first master asks the woman how to deal with Saint Qian Ning, Goddess Linger, Divine Sword Sect and Law Fu Holy Land. Does Senior Li have any instructions? And the woman is saying, Senior Li didn't say anything, but since they colluded with the mastermind behind the scenes, I think Senior Li will definitely not forgive them. Let the two holy masters decide for themselves. And after listening to the women, the first master says, From today on, there is no more Luofu Holy Land and Divine Sword sect in the Xientian realm. And Luofu is thinking about looking at the woman. No, how can our Holy Land of Luofu be destroyed because of this? It's all this woman, as long as. Just take her. There is capital to negotiate conditions. And Luofu moves forward to attack the women. But just then, the woman takes out her treasure and attacks Loafu with it, due to which Loafu starts bleeding from his nose and mouth, and there is a hole in his chest, and along with him, Chao Yijian also gets hit by the attack, due to which both of them are killed at that place. After this, everyone starts greeting the woman and linger, and the woman is speaking to them all. You are so kind. We are all cultivators of the Xientian realm. We are of the same lineage, and as long as we can live in harmony, that's it. This fight was not in vain. And then one of the men says, I dare to ask the two holy masters. There was a rumor circulating before, claiming that there was a peerless master accepting disciples outside the Tsungli mountain range. Did you release this news? And after listening to that man, the first master says, Yes. Young master Lu Rang and young master Long Zixuan are both apprentices of that senior. But that senior, we are not even qualified to meet him. And after hearing the first master's words, everyone around understands that the hidden master is real, and people say, it turns out that the hidden master is real. After this, the scene shifts, and now Xiling is painting, but her hand is trembling. And Na Feng is watching all this from a distance, and she is thinking, Ziling has not written for a whole morning. Has Ziling reached a bottleneck? It seems that he encountered the same predicament as me before. And just then, Li Fan comes to that place and says, Drink tea, hold the ground, feed the fish, and play the piano as you please. Likewise, you must also paint as you please. It doesn't matter what you see, what matters is what you think. And when Xiling listens to Li Fan's words, she says, As you wish. What you see is not important. What is important is I think it is what it is. Teacher. I understand. And Nan Fong is thinking happily. Ziling has become immortal? From the supreme stage, cross over the quasi-immortal and directly enter the immortal path. And Li Fan is saying to Ziling, from tomorrow you can draw something else. And then someone calls Li Fan from behind, Senior Li, we are back. And listening to that voice, Li Fan is thinking, it was Mu Qianning's voice. It seemed like they were back from a group fight. Linger and Li Fan's two disciples come to that place. And Zixuan is happy and tells, Thank you, Master, for giving us the utensils. We have brought them back. Linger says to Li Fan, Senior, Thank you for sending Mr. Long and Mr. Lu. The matter has been successfully resolved. Li Fan says to Linger smilingly, It's a small thing, not enough words to thank you. But Li Fan is thinking, 
These two stupid apprentices, one holding broken chopsticks and the other holding a fire stick, how can they help? This is to save face for me. Then Li Fan says to both of them, You two are quite clever. Throw the fire stick back into the kitchen, throw the chopsticks into the firewood pile, and burn it. And after listening to Li Fan, both of them get shocked and think, Oh my God, this is such a treasure. Linger is telling Li Fan, This battle was fought beautifully. The outside world now knows that you are here, and also knows that you are here to recruit disciples. Next, I am afraid that countless people will come to become disciples, including many geniuses from various fields. I'm afraid this will affect Senior Qingxiu. Please punish me. And the woman is smilingly saying to Li Fan, It's all Qian Ning's fault. Your lack of thinking has caused trouble for your seniors. And hearing this, Li Fan's reaction changes, and he is thinking, Lu must have let them brag about what a powerful master they had and deceived everyone. And Li Fan says to the woman, They only knew about me and wanted Tio become my disciples after meeting Long Zixuan and Lu Rang, right? And the woman says, Exactly. Senior and Li Fan is thinking, Sure enough, these two silly boys are fooling around outside. And then Li Fan starts writing something on the paper, and he is thinking, Although I am short of apprentices, I would rather lack them than have too many. They cannot all be fools like Lu Rang and Long Zixuan. And Li Fan gives a paper to Nafong and says, Nafong, set this up outside the door, so that those who shouldn't come can retreat in the face of difficulties. And Nafong looks at that paper and says, Only those who can solve this problem can enter and become a disciple. And everyone gets surprised after seeing that mathematical question. And everyone is looking at that question. Seeing that question Linger says, This is probably the supreme truth. And Lu Rang says, Only the truly strong can unlock it. Then the woman says, As expected of Senior Li, We have never seen such a question before, And I am afraid it is an insurmountable difficulty for cultivators in the entire Xientian realm. The next day, We see a lot of flying ships heading towards Sunli Mountain. And many people have come in front of Li Fan's house, And they are saying, this place is extremely extraordinary. It is indeed the place where the true Buddha lives in seclusion. The charm of Buddhism is endless, and the wonderful principles are hidden. Yes, I feel a rare kind of tranquility in my heart. Just taking a look at this small mountain village is far better than a year of hard training in the Tsihung Jingzhai. And a man is touching something and saying, Is this where the senior lives? You can feel the sword's power just by getting close. And when he touches that thing, his hand starts trembling. And then, a mathematical cat appears at that place. And she asks them all a mathematical question. Given that angle 1 is 45 and angle 2 is 30 degrees, find the measure of angle 3. By the way, even a middle school child can answer this mathematical question. And also, I want to ask you guys, do you know the answer to this mathematical question? If you guys know the answer to this question, please comment and answer me this question. Further, when everyone hears that mathematical question, they become very surprised and start saying, Is this the decree of the Supreme Being? Legend has it that only the Supreme Being in the Fairyland can show the power of the decree. This is a question set by the senior, and only by solving it can one be qualified to become a disciple. I'm afraid this has already been involved arrived at the supreme immortal path. And then, we see a girl, who after hearing about that question is saying, Two is born, three is born from two, and all things are born from three. The figure composed of the three golden lines of this senior clearly contains the wonderful principles of the heavens. Who in heaven and on earth can untie it? Every golden thread looks like a peerless sword mark that cuts through eternity. If you can understand it thoroughly, you may become an immortal instantly. Then everyone bows before that mathematics cat and says, We will understand the great path of our predecessors right here. And some time passes, and a man comes to that place and he is saying, No one in the Hono Dashuan heaven realm is destined to do so. Fortunately, I can also glimpse a corner of the great road from this decree, which is considered a worthwhile trip. And then, a boy falls on the ground, his condition becomes very bad solving this question. And his father says to him, It's difficult for you to understand this supreme road. Let's go. You are injured. Your father will take you away. But the boy says, No. 
I won't leave. Even if I die, I will follow the path of my predecessors to become the strongest. And his father, while leaving, says to the boy, Although you are a sword cultivator with a broken body, it is not a bad thing to have such a tenacious sword heart then he says to an old man. It seems that I have no chance to meet my senior this time. Where is the disciple of the holy master who is destined to be a Buddha? And the old man says, he also refuses to leave, so just let him go. Children and grandchildren will have their own blessings. Aren't the parents and children of holy Lord Dugu among them? Then Linger comes to Li Fan, and says to Li Fan, teacher, that the question is too difficult. Thousands of people have come, but not a single one has solved it. Now, almost all have left. Li Fan says to Linger, hey, don't panic. But Li Fan is thinking, fortunately, I came up with a question, otherwise these guys who don't even know the interior angles of a triangle or junior high school mathematics would be taking them as apprentices. Still claiming to be a genius in various fields? This is simply unscientific, not at all leisurely science. But then, Li Fan remembers something, which makes him cough. And Li Fan asks Nafong, Nafong, do you learn mathematics and geometry here in Xientian realm? And Nafong says, mathematics? Geometry? This kind of terrifying treasure technique has never been heard of or seen in the Xientian world. And Li Fan has made a mess at this place. Damn, that's too sloppy. Then Li Fan says to Nafong, Nafong, take that question back and burn it. And Li Fan is thinking, it's not that these thousands of people are stupid at all, it's that the Xientian realm is all cultivating immortals, and no one studies mathematics at all. So sloppy. And Nafong asks Li Fan, why do you want to remove him? So Li Fan says, because no one can solve that problem. Next we see a monk, who is praying with folded hands. And then Nafong comes to that place. And that big mathematical cat, I mean, throws that paper out of there. And seeing Nanfong the monk says, Dare you ask the goddess? But that senior's disciple? And Nanfong says yes to that monk, and then a boy comes to that place and says to Nanfong, Goddess, why did you take off the title? Did that senior have any instructions? And Nanfong tells them, This question, Xientian realm no one can figure it out. Because this involves two supreme avenues, mathematics and geometry. Then the boy asks Nanfong, now that you have revealed the topic, does it mean that we can go inside to see that senior? But Nafong says the teacher didn't say it clearly. Then the boy asks the monk, Do we want to go in? And that monk says, I have become a useless person. Life and death are not important to me. I will enter. Then that boy is thinking, Kongming Temple is clean, and I came here to pay my respects to my senior. Yes, how am I different from a useless person? If Chin Chin is like this, what should I fear? And now that boy starts shouting loudly, Dugu Yuching, the Dugu family, came here to pay homage to my senior. Li Fan also hears her voice, and Na Feng tells Li Fan, Master, these two people persisted until the end, no matter what refused to leave. And Li Fan says smilingly, Well, since you are so determined, let's bring them in. Then both of them come near Li Fan, and bow on their knees in front of Li Fan. And both of them are saying, the junior Dugu Yuching comes from the Dugu family, and she only hopes to follow her seniors and learn the great way. This junior, Xing Chin, is devoted to the Tao. I beg you, senior, to take this junior in. And Li Fan is thinking looking at both of them, the attitude of these two people is sincere. Having been outside for so long is enough to show that they are determined. But what do they want to learn? And Li Fan says to that boy, Do you want to learn calligraphy? And hearing this the boy says, I have been passionate about calligraphy my whole life. And that boy is thinking, calligraphy? Yes, the senior is deliberately trying to teach me. That question contains a strong sense of swordsmanship, and it must have been written by the senior himself. And Li Fan says to that monk, and you? You are a monk, but I have always refused to worship the Buddha or accept Amitbha in the temple. I have never believed in it. And the monk is thinking after listening to Li Fan, such terrifying existences say they don't worship Buddha even though they see it. I'm afraid it means that to him, Buddha is nothing at all. Even in the immortal realm, people do not dare to call Amitbha Buddha directly. 
Is this being in front of me someone who can casually talk about the ancestor of ten thousand Buddhas? And then Lu Rang comes running to that place and says to Li Fan, Master, I'm going to feed the fish. Li Fan asks him to leave, but when Monk sees the big sun Buddha bowl, he becomes very surprised and thinks, This is the big sun Buddha bowl? Yes. This must be the big sun Buddha bowl, exactly the same as what is recorded in the classics. Shouldn't the sacred objects of Buddhism be hidden in the celestial realm and in the most holy spiritual mountain? How could it be? Could it be his true identity? There are thousands of Buddhist ways. Buddha can transform into thousands of bodies. And Li Fan is thinking about that monk. If this kid wants to learn Buddhism from me, I can't teach him. How should I reject him with all the rules and precepts? Then the monk goes directly and bows near Li Fan's feet and says to Li Fan, Senior, Qin Qin is willing to give up everything and follow the path of his predecessors. And Li Fan is thinking after listening to her words, giving up everything means returning to secular life. This is acceptable. Just stop banging wooden fish in my ears and chant sutras every day. Then Li Fan says to the monk, Okay, then you can sweep the floor in the yard from now on. And at the same time Li Fan is thinking, I remember that in a certain TV series, there was a sweeping monk, Ro, which suited him just right. Then Li Fan says to the monk, Okay, no need to be polite, get up, it's getting late, after dinner, I will teach you things tomorrow. Nan Fong, Zi Ling, serve. Then when both of them go for dinner, they are very surprised to see the food lying on the table, and think, is this a dish? It's clearly a feast of holy medicine. And seeing the reaction of both of them, Lu Rang and Zishuan are saying, Come on, brother. When we first came here, we felt very surprised. But as you gradually get used to it, you will understand that this is our daily routine. Then both of them are having dinner. And the boy says, I now understand why senior brother Long and senior brother Lu are so outstanding. And Lu Rang says to both of them, Two junior brothers, I will show you the vegetables in the vegetable field I planted tomorrow. These vegetables all grow in the vegetable field. And the monk makes a gesture and says, Senior sister Nafom, she and we see Nafom, who is having an orgasm. Oh, sorry. I mean enjoying it. Then Nafom slowly opens her eyes and says, I'm sorry, fellow juniors, I didn't control myself well enough to become immortal. And when both of them hear that Nafom has now become an immortal, they are very surprised and both of them start thinking, how could it be possibility? Just by having a meal, you have become an immortal. Monster, absolutely monster. Next, the scene shifts, and we see sea of clouds in the sky. And at that place there are only those black hoodie men. And one of the men asks, any news? So the second man explains, Xientian realm is one of the twenty-one lower realms connected to Xingyun city. I went to the Immortal History Museum to check all the records about the lower realms of Xingyun city cultivators and found this. This is the only person recorded in 2,000 years who went to the lower world and never returned. The man says, thanks for your hard work. Then the man says, 300 years ago, a demon cultivator, Ming Tianbei, sneaked into the Tianhan sect, took away the Tianhan sect's most precious treasure, the Tianhan pearl, and severely damaged the Tianhan sect. He escaped into the lower world to escape for his life, and his specific whereabouts are unknown. This person was extremely vicious and his cultivation was at the level of a heavenly immortal. His attacks were vicious and he killed countless immortals and immortals. Moreover, the cultivators he killed often had their vitality cut off and their souls scattered. The attack was vicious. Life was cut off, and the soul was scattered to the north. The demonic cultivator was vicious killing people very thoroughly and leaving their souls scattered. From this point of view, it was consistent with the deaths of Zhang Xian and Luo Ming. And the other man says, forcibly descending from the immortal realm requires paying a heavy price. Even if you are in the realm of immortals, you may fall below the realm of immortals if you enter the lower realm. After recuperating for three hundred years, this demon cultivator should have returned to the realm of a true immortal, or above. If it is a heavenly immortal, no. Immortals above the true immortals and mysterious immortals are the heavenly immortals. There are not enough people in Xientian realm. Once a heavenly immortal appears, he will be sensed by the immortal realm. That's right, 
even if the other party recovers his cultivation level, he will only dare to stay in the realm of Xianxian at most. If the southern territory is really Mingtian Bay, we may not need to take action. Xinyan's city is chasing him. We only need to confirm one thing now about the existence of the southern territory, whether it is the demonic cultivator Gu Tianbei or not. After this, the scene shifts, and we see the ruins of the immortal platform. And the bottom of the immortal platform, there is a man. And he is looking ahead. There is a coffin in front of him, and the man says, after being nurtured by the Tianhun Pearl for three hundred years, the demon lord's original soul should have awakened, recently. There was an incredibly terrifying sword intent from above, penetrating through thousands of layers of earth and attacking. Fortunately, it did not target this place. Otherwise, I'm afraid both me and the soul of Demon Lord will be annihilated together. And the man starts laughing like crazy, vigorous demonic energy. Is the Demon Lord's soul about to come out? You are finally about to come out. The immortal realm and all other realms will tremble once again under your command. And then a little girl comes out of that coffin, and that girl asks, Who are you? You are Ming Tianbei. And the man looks at that little girl and thinks, Is this the demon lord? Is the demon lord a female? And the man says, I, Ming Tianbei, servant of the demon General Gonya, is coming to pay respects to you. Your return will surely once again. And the little girl says, Shut up. I sense the presence of my other souls here. And then, a demon comes to that place and says, I'm change, here to respectfully welcome the gathering of the demon lord's souls. Please, accompany me and complete the demon lord's true form. And that demon moves forward to attack that little girl, but the man comes in front of him, and says to that demon, change? Do you serve for demon general Jingni? But the demon emits black energy from a jar and says, The soul I guard is the true demon lord, do you, a my profound demon, dare to try to stop me? The demon lord's soul shall return to its original place. Then the little girl casts a teleport spell, due to which both of them get teleported to another place. And the little girl says to the man, Carry me and run quickly, my strength has not fully recovered yet. But that demon is not going to give up chasing both of them. He comes back to attack both of them. And seeing this the man starts flying very fast. But then the little girl feels something. And she says, I feel an extraordinary aura below. And hearing this the man says, That village? The vast and desolate Mount Sungli has already been destroyed. Why is this small mountain village still unharmed? Next we see a man in a black hoodie. And one of the men is saying, it seems that the master from the southern region is living in seclusion in the mountain village ahead. It would be dangerous to approach uninvited. And the other man says, We just need to confirm that the one hiding here is the demonic cultivator. And then the little girl and the man fly past them. And seeing this the man says this aura. It can be confirmed now. The demon cultivator Ming Tianbei is indeed hidden here. And his other companion says, Lord, from a distance... That demonic cultivator's cultivation level seems to have even surpassed the level of profound immortal. But the man smiles and says, Even the great golden immortal has to kneel under the sanction of the immortal realm. Then we see both of them, who are running very fast. And that man is thinking, What place? Is this? My power is being suppressed so heavily that I can't even take off. And after some time, both of them reach nearly Fan's house and seeing that place the man is thinking, what? What kind of courtyard is this? The aura of immortality flowers like the vast sea, and the harmonious sound of the great Tao quietly circulate. It would be quite dangerous to get any closer. And the man says to the little girl, Demon Lord, The one who resides here in seclusion is probably a powerful being from the immortal realm. But the little girl says, Go in and take a look. And after listening to the little girl, the man says, My lord, don't go. He's probably indeed a powerful being from the immortal realm, but the immortals and demons cannot coexist. I'm afraid. And that little girl comes down and says, How could such a powerful immortal exist in the small Xientian realm? Maybe he was waiting for me all along. Who knows? However, just to be safe, we need to disguise ourselves a bit. The clothes you are wearing are too conspicuous. Borrow me some power, I haven't recovered yet. And after listening to the little girl, the man is thinking, 
Demon Lord, your clothes are not better than mine. Then the little girl uses her power and changes her clothes and also changes the man's clothes. Then she goes in front and starts knocking on the door and says, Excuse me, is anyone there? And Nafong opens the door. And when Nafong sees that little girl, she starts asking, Little sister, who are you? What are you doing here? And the little girl says, Sister, there are bad guys chasing us. My uncle and I are on the run. Can you help us? Nafong gets surprised after hearing this. And Nafong comes to that man, and looking at him she is thinking, This person is also a cultivator, and his aura is extremely extraordinary. And Nafong says to that little girl, Sister, come in with me first. But that little girl is thinking, This devil is still in this spiritual cute state, no matter how powerful you are in the fairy world, you still can't see through this devil's disguise. And as soon as she goes inside Li Fan's house, she gets surprised. When she looks in front, she sees that there is a phoenix, a dragon in front of her, seeing which the little girl gets very scared. She starts crying and holds Na Fong and is saying, I'm not, I didn't mean to break in. I'm not a bad person. Please I'm scared and Na Fong is saying to that little girl little sister, don't be afraid. And Li Fan is thinking while looking at that little girl, although the clothes are simple, but the skin is tender and tender, it can be seen that he is dressed like this on purpose, in disguise. His skin is pale, and he seems to be sick. Could it be that something happened to his family, and he is dressed like this to avoid being chased by his enemies? And Li Fan says she is no ordinary person. However, since you have entered this door, let's stay for now. And hearing this the little girl is thinking, what kind of unimaginable ancient giant is this? Has my identity been seen through by him? And that little girl says, thank you, senior. And Li Fan puts his hand on the little girl's head and says, there is no need to call me senior, just call me big brother. Li Fan asks Na Fong, where is her uncle? So Na Fong tells Li Fan, her uncle is not like ordinary people who dare not come in when they are outside. And hearing this Li Fan thinks, this uncle is probably a hired bodyguard or something. If a small mountain village is so united and there is a problem, everyone will come to help. What kind of bodyguard is needed? And Li Fan tells Na Fong, let him leave for now. If the pursuers come, he will suffer a lot. And Na Fong says yes after listening to Li Fan. Then she starts going to that man, and then the little girl also says, I will also go to my uncle, I have to tell him something. And now both of them come to that man, and Na Fong says to that man, my master orders you to leave for now. And that man is thinking, how can I leave the devil? Today's demon Lord Yuan Hun still needs protection. And the little girl says to the man, Uncle, please find a place to hide. The seniors here will protect me. And after listening to that little girl, the man is thinking, the person whom the demon lord calls a senior. The demon lord means to let me go first. Next, we see the demon bursting out of the ground. And he is saying, the breath of the soul disappears when it reaches here. Think and learn. What a strong aura of avenue. Is this place the residence of a powerful person from the immortal realm? It turns out that the Gong Ye demon commander's lineage colluded with the immortal realm. Shameful. I want to see it. After all, a strong man from the immortal realm dares to snatch someone from the demon commander Jing Ye? After this we see Li Fan who is sitting near the pond and fishing. And he is saying, What's going on in the yard? Is it Lu Rang who is going crazy again with Ching Chen? The fish all scared away. And the man also hears that voice, and when he looks back, he sees the same demon in front of him. But the condition of that demon is very bad. And the demon is speaking you. What is it that you are colluding with? And seeing the condition of that demon, that man is also very surprised. And he is thinking, it seems that the demon lord does have friendship with some terrifying existences, and it should be safe to have fun you now. I should hide now and inform magician Gongya. After this the scene shifts, and we see those black hoodie men, who are talking. How? The identity of the existence in the southern territory is that demon cultivator? Without further ado, I'll keep an eye on who he is and notify the helmsman immediately. It's that demonic cultivator in the dark sky. Why split the helm? 
As long as Xunyan City in the Northern Immortal Territory knows that the demon cultivator who stole the Heavenly Soul Pearl is hiding here. Kill with a borrowed knife that's it. 